Welcome back to Sunrise Did All. Just to get some updates what about what is going on in uh, Brno at the moment. We do know that yesterday there were some incidents in Gubbio. Yes, the military did release a statement that they had successfully repelled attacks. But let's head to our studios in uh, Meiduguri. We've got uh, Abba Aji Kali, who is the state coordinator for the civilian JTF. He joins us live from our studios in uh, Brno. And then we also uh, have Honorable Francis Bala, who is a former vice chairman of Goza local government area. Both of them joining us from our studios there, as you can see. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. Now, you're both on ground at the moment. Let me start with uh, uh, Abba. You are coordinating the civilian JTF. Uh, I know there's been several actions and uh, inactions on the part of those who are supposed to do certain things, but give us an update. Do you have information about the attack that happened last night? Uh, uh, well, we have uh, information of the attack in Gubio and our military personnel have done a very good job. They have repelled that attack and the people were safe. So this is the update that I'm going to give you on the recent attack of yesterday's night. Because there's been lots of questions and impressions about the civilian JTF, which you coordinate there. Many wonder, because when your members are targeted, the reports usually is that they get to the houses of your member members, they threaten them, they're actually killed to dissuade them from carrying out their responsibilities. What is going on about how do you maintain that level of confidence and ensuring that the enthusiasm is still up in spite of the attacks they suffer from the insurgents? Uh, you see, the civilian JTF is child necessity. And we came on board and we have taken out to protect the integrity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So there is no any threat that will undermine the good job that civilian JTF is going to execute to protect the integrity of this republic. So we are, we are always ready and we always stand with the consistent authority to see that we have lasting peace in this country. Obala, you are in Goza. Is it safe right now? I'm from Goza. Ask your question. Give us your impression. In terms of, because we know that Goza has consistently come under the attack of the insurgents, what is the situation at the moment there? Well, uh, we thank uh, the Almighty God and we thank the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We thank the government of Borno State. Uh, the situation in Goza now is a bit uh, calm than before. Uh, Goza, when it was captured by the Boko Haram, we thank the Nigerian military. They were able to uh, capture Goza back to, uh, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As you know, that uh, Goza was uh, the, uh, the targeted as uh, the capital city of uh, Boko Haram. We, we are by, by, by so, one of the local government may have gone. We may be having 773, but we thank the military that uh, Goza is back. We have Goza inclusive among the 774 local government. The situation in Goza now is that uh, some of our people have returned home. We have people in Pulka, we have people in Limankara, we have people in Goza town itself. These three villages, we have people there. But the situation we are crying for now, especially in Goza, is that our people want to go back to home. But the situation is that up to now, the securities are doing their best and the governor is doing his best. Especially our people, three quarters of those living in Cameroon now, the IDPs in Cameroon are from Goza. I thank, that, uh, I thank God that the other time our executive governor, Professor Zulum, was in Cameroon. I know he talked with them. I heard that uh, he is going to do his best to bring them back to Eshgeshia and Pulka because most of the people that are living there uh, in IDP in Cameroon are from the Goza East side. 
But uh, we are urging the government, we are urging the government, both state and the federal government, including even the international community, to see that our people are brought back. If our people are not brought back, virtually, I can say that Goza, our population is getting down drastically. And virtually, our morality, our culture, and our training, and so on and so forth, is getting off. When they go to Cameroon now, they mix up. You know how French-speaking countries, are, they live. You cannot compare with the British-speaking uh, nations. Now, most of our people there now, they have started going to some unwanted social vices because of the mix-up that they had with people in Cameroon. Uh, just one, one more thing, uh, Honorable Bala. Now, there's this saying that says that, you know, if you want to kill terrorists, you, you can use a gun. But to kill terrorism, you have to use education. We understand that, you know, the number of out-of-school children in Borno State is on the rise. So I'd like to ask, what is the state of education, schools especially? Remember Chibok, that was a major thing. So how is education going in Borno State now? Uh, about education? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, most of our schools, as you know, uh, they have been transferred to Maiduguri. Especially, this is only a few of the schools that are in southern Borno that are operating in their normal basis. Most of the schools in central Borno and northern Borno are now situated in Maiduguri. We thank the Minister of Education, they are doing their best. Most of the teachers have been transferred. The schools have been merged with the schools in Maiduguri. They are getting, uh, they are being taught. There's no problem about education. The Minister of Education are doing their best. We'll go to break now, but we'll come back and just get some more perspectives from both of you before we wrap it up. Do join us again. In uh, Meiduguri, Ayo, you've got a question for Yes, I have a question for the... Uh, Leon JTF. Um, so what do you think we need to do now if we must get the kind of peace that we want in that area at the moment as a member of this, coordinator of the civilian JTF? What must we do now for peace to reign in my degree? That's for Mr. Kali, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Okay, are you talking to me? Yes, I'm, yes, I'm Mr. Kali. Kali. Okay. Uh, what we need to do to have lasting peace in Borno, at Nigeria at large, first of all, both the Muslim and Christians go back to God. Let us pray harder. Let us purify our hearts. By the grace of God, we will have that lasting peace. But what I want uh, a government to do about this insurgence, you see, people fail to understand what is that really war means. This war, the way we see it, is war of economic war. Because you see, our military we are at the high spirit to accomplish this job. But the problem is the international community, the rule of engagement, amnesty, human rights, and what have you. I believe if Nigeria military can fix peace in Liberia and Sierra Leone, they have that temple to fix that peace in our own sovereignty. But the problem now is, if we talk about, let's use whatever weapon we have to finish this war, you will hear people saying, Nigeria has signed a treaty. What I want government to do is, if Nigeria has signed a treaty of human rights or whatever, America also signed a treaty but because of one American soldier lost in Afghanistan, America used a heavy bomb that has stopped using in the world. They use it against the sovereignty of another country. 
So I want to, uh, I want to say my mind to the government. Let us put Nigeria first. We don't have other country that we can call our own. So let us bring out whatever we have, what kind of weapon that we have, and pass these terrorists. We we get your I point. Believe. Yeah, we, we we get your point. But you know, there are rules of engagement, and they have to abide by those rules of yes. engagement. I don't think you're asking for them to jettison or disregard all of those rules. But let me go to uh, Honorable Bala in conclusion now. You want people to come back to Gaza. What arrangements, what is there? How do you ensure that women and children, how do you let them know that, yes, it's safe enough for them to come back? Yes, uh, women and children are talking of uh, how are they safe that they will come back. Now, at present, people are living in Gaza. People are living in Limankara. People are living in Polka. People are living in Izgi. Are they not people? Are they not Gaza indigenous? If there are people that are living there, why is that they will not be safe? The securities are there. The government are doing their best. Especially in Goza town. Most uh, government have put in a lot of uh, money. They have renovated, renovated houses. Personal houses for people. To accommodate or to uh, 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 apply to turn back. If they are willing, as the governor is doing his best, to see that they are brought back, it is better to come and stay in your country, in your home, to suffer than being in a number, another country. Bala, we know, well, like Pulka now, we have sort of, okay. have sort of rainfall, in, rain, in, water in Pulka, but people are still living there. All right, we, we need to go. Of, uh, living in, in another nation. All right, we, we'll, we'll get back to this in the days ahead, uh, I reckon. I know that uh, Ayo has been meaning to make a trip to Bardo, but now that he's seen or uh, heard you, who knows if he'll change his mind. Well, yes, well, I have civilian JTF to guard me. So. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> Honorable uh, Francis Bala is a former vice chairman of Goza local government area. We also did have uh, Abba Aji Kali, who is the state coordinator of the civilian JTF. Both of them, as you saw, joined us from our studios in Meiduguri.